I've got a cold, everybody, so <laughs> if I sound a bit miserable, please excuse me. My brother told me proudly last year that he hadn't bought a newspaper in 15 years. And that is why you are so spectacularly ill-informed, I told him, pay for your news, cheapskate. To me, taking your news from social media only is the equivalent of taking it from the graffiti on the schoolyard wall. If you aren't sure that it comes from a monitored news site, you can't rely on it. What do you pay for when you pay your license fee, when you buy a newspaper like the Irish Times, and I'll even mention the Examiner, is checked out news. That's what you're paying for, the time it took for those journalists and those editors to check out the story, to confirm in as far as possible the truth of what they've discovered, to put it in context. And it takes time and money to do that, just as it takes time to train a doctor so that he can die or she can diagnose what your ills are, rather than have you simply going on the internet and diagnosing yourself. <coughs> I think I remember seeing the real danger of social media first, live on television during the last Irish presidential debate. And independent candidate Sean Gallagher was unexpectedly in the leads in, in the lead in opinion polls, and the other candidates were accusing him, understandably, of being a proxy Fianna Fáil candidate. And if you remember, Fianna Fáil was politically toxic at the time. And in the middle of the debate with all the candidates, the presenter read out a Twitter message that Sinn Féin was going to hold a press conference the next day where they would deliver evidence that Sean Gallagher had been given money some years ago for a Fianna Fáil fundraiser. It was an attempt to connect him with Fianna Fáil. Now, it was a, a false tweet, as it turned out, but it compounded a very bad night for Gallagher, who wasn't doing well in the debate anyway. Would Michael D. Higgins have won anyway? Yes, he probably would. But the episode did not help Gallagher, and RTE has since apologised to him and paid damages. But I remember watching it all and being absolutely shocked, shocked to my core that such a claim was instantly put on air without being properly checked. I mean, the first lesson you learn in journalism as a cub reporter on the local paper is, have you checked it out? Is it true? And there will always be a conflict between the latest rumour and the need to check it out. I mean, I've put a brilliant piece, or what seemed to me like a brilliant piece, together so many times. And then I'm stopped in my tracks by an editor who says, go back and check it all out again, and then we'll run it past the lawyers. And 80% of the time, in fact, I was right. But in a vital 20%, either I wasn't right completely or I wasn't at all right. Check it, check it, check it. That's what you pay your money for. But what's happening now? A news flash comes up on Facebook. And because any old blog on Facebook has equal billing to a trusted news source like the traditional Irish newspapers or RTE, there's a whole generation out there that doesn't discriminate between what's reliable and what is totally random. And what's also happening is that because that whole generation has got used to getting its news for free on Facebook, the whole business model for journalism is disappearing. Social media is now the main source of news for 18 to 24 year olds and they mainly access it for free on smartphones. So newspapers are in crisis. Printed newspaper sales in Ireland are falling. They've been falling since 2007. The daily market has declined 9.3% year on year. Sales in the Sunday market fell 7.6%. The Irish Times print and e-paper editions in the first half of 2017 were down 5% year on year. The Irish Independent combined print and digital editions are down 8%. The Examiner is down 8.5%. And the Red Top papers are down too. And yes, some people are moving to get their paper online, but the advertisers aren't following the paper online. They're transferring with a whole generation to social media. In the United States, 2017 figures indicate that over 70% of all digital advertising goes to Facebook and Google. So advertising revenue to papers either in print or online is reduced. I came through the golden years where a journalist was paid a decent wage, where well, goodness me, we even got pensions at the end of what we did. But you could do a decent job, you could bring up a family on whatever salary you got as a journalist. That's gone. 
That is gone forever. Because even senior journalists on newspapers now are either working from shift to f shift with no contract or on at best two year contracts. So there's no money to give young, hungry young journalists time to do investigative work. Senior correspondents might get a little bit more leeway, but increasingly they're being asked all the time to feed the almighty web. I've spoken to so many political correspondent friends of mine, and they've got a break off in the middle. Oh God, I've got to go and feed the web. Now, how are you going to do the in-depth interview? How are you going to do the investigative piece when you're feeding this animal every hour? The only way that any sort of quality can be sustained into the future, it seems to me, is for the price of the digital subscription, because that's what's happening, we're all going online, is for the price of the digital subscription to rise. So, in the future, those of us who are interested in monitored, reliable news and information will be paying quite high prices for our digital subscriptions. And, indeed, it may be that advertisers actually decide, okay, we pay to have access to such choosy, fastidious AB customers. So that'll be the new media business model. And that's great, because some of us can afford it, and some of us will be okay. But poorer people and younger people will have less and less access to reliable, monitored news. And that has consequences for politics and for democracy, and we have seen that already. Look at Trump. He's on Twitter all the time where he lies and he doesn't need to think it's important to tell the truth. And the people who voted for him didn't think it was important whether or not he lied either. And all those journalists who constantly pointed out his untruths and his inconsistencies were ignored. And I heard somebody on the radio from the US recently saying, I know he's lying, but it's what I want to hear. So where is the future for people in my trade if truth, our very reason, raison d'être, is no longer demanded or respected? We live at a time where fewer and fewer people watch the main news on television or the major current affairs programs. And what's happening, and I know this sounds like a dirge, but it does make me very sad, is that more and more journalists are going into public relations as newspapers lay journalists off. And for those of us who are journalists, to have somebody who is a journalist go into PR is a little bit like in the Jewish faith, you know, when somebody Jewish would marry somebody who was a Gentile and they would be regarded as dead. There, there is that feeling. They have gone over to the dark side. And if you watch your newspapers, and particularly your provincial newspapers, more and more of the content in newspapers comes from public relations handouts. That's what happens when you have fewer journalists and more space to fill. So with fewer journalists and the ones who remain acting as copy tasters rather than originators of news stories, we're in the hands of the big corporations who can afford to have a massive uh, number of PR people, spinners, who will set the agenda. And big corporations and political parties will therefore not be held to account in any way for what they do and society will be at their mercy. And we've seen that in this country only recently. If you remember the row over the uh, advertisements, quote unquote, that were placed in newspapers, paid space, by the government, except that the editor in each case was asked not to put the advertising feature tag at the top so that people would think that they were reading order, ordinary editorial copy. And in some cases, papers gave in. Why? Because they ain't got no money and they were being handed four and a half thousand that week, which they wouldn't usually have expected. So we're already beginning to see the imbalance in the power between the two. Big government, big corporations are going to be able to dictate the content of impoverished newspapers offline and online and power won't be held to account. So for those of you who get your news for free on Facebook, you're the cheapskates. You have to ask whether if you don't pay for the product, you are the product. You are the fools, and indeed you are. And you look at the latest scandal, which has revealed how Cambridge Analytica used information garnered from Facebook to, they claim, influence the last US election and the Brexit referendum. Is that how you want to be manipulated? I don't have Facebook. I'm a suspicious old bat. I don't trust it, and rightly so. 
And I've been nauseated by the extent to which a younger generation put Mark Zuckerberg on a pedestal and call him a visionary, as recently was the case when he was coming over to speak to some conference uh, in, in the British Isles. He ain't a visionary. He's a businessman abusing words like friends and community to make obscene profits. Um, he's known about this data scandal for years. He's done nothing until he's suddenly realizing that it's affecting his share price. And he's now vowing to change things. But he was the one who did the deal in 2007 to give developers of applications access to Facebook users' data in return for them building applications which would further expand Facebook's empire. He now asserts that protecting people's data is at the heart of everything we do. Really? Appearing now in front of the US Senate and saying sorry, he still hasn't agreed, for instance, to regulation. And in the early days of Facebook, Zuckerberg noted that his 4,000 Harvard colleagues, each of whom had given him their private information, trusted him. It's ironic that he then reportedly called them dumb fucks. If that's the cynical attitude of social media leaders, how do we protect the future of quality journalism? There's one answer that's been suggested by a London University lecturer called Justin Schlossberg. He argues that Google and Facebook gain traffic by using stories generated by established media um, uh, outlets and newspapers, but it pays nothing for that content. So he suggests that a levy should be placed on the billions made, particularly by Facebook, in order to build a fund to reverse the decline in quality journalism. And when you think about a levy, it makes sense. I mean, to me, these sites are parasites taking our work. They should pay. They should pay for our work. They should pay for the work of poets, musicians, actors, artists whose work they take too. And we shouldn't throw our hands up and say we can't control them. And I'm no persuading a government to impose such a levy in Ireland, particularly with our attitude to IT firms, may be very difficult because they don't want to touch these guys at all. Take the recent um, Facebook scandal. In response to a recent inquiry from the journal.ie, a government spokesman said that data protection legislation does not come under the remit of the minister with responsibility for data protection. <laughs> yep. That's how proactive our government is in putting social media giants in their place. And as to data misuse, they seem to adopt the attitude of the Americans that there is zero privacy in this day and age and that we should all get over it. And uh, Vinay is absolutely right. It's about time our government and our cabinet started to come to terms with what they need to do. Happily, the European Union, to which we still belong, is more concerned about it. But even there, the emphasis is much more on self-regulation, which ain't really good enough. But at least Europe is ready to tax those uh, social media giants, which Ireland so far has shown it's t too terrified to do. There comes a time when we have to make sure that these IT giants, whose uh, uh, whose who's, 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 um, uh, technology has enhanced our lives so much in so many ways, don't further reduce the quality of our democracy by allowing misuse of data, data in elections and by undermining and destroying independent journalism. And that time needs to be sooner rather than later. We can't avoid change. And the medium will keep changing. And newspapers, as we know them, sadly, will disappear, and terrestrial channels, as we know them, indeed, may disappear. But good, truthful journalism doesn't have to. Thank you.